is how Iran's government trains and recruits child soldiers. Iran Wire, an independent online news site, has recently published a shocking report exposing the Islamic Republic's use of child soldiers during the massive protests that have been shaking the country since September of 2022. The report provides a comprehensive history of Iran's use and training of child soldiers since the establishment of the Islamic Republic after the Iranian Revolution in 1979. It also highlights the regime's use of children as human shields and riot police in the ongoing rallies against the government. Furthermore, Iranian authorities have intentionally put children in harm's way, using them as human shields to accuse demonstrators of acts of violence. Iran Wire also documented one case of a child soldier being injured after Iranian security forces mistakenly took him for a protester in the recent uprising. The report includes disturbing photos of teenage boys who were trained by Iranian security forces to deal with warfare and urban riots, some dating as far back as 2016. Most of the children were between the ages of 12 to 17 and were seen wearing anti-riot gear and holding assault rifles. This report also revealed that, the, that Iran's use of child soldiers to suppress civilian protests has intensified over the past few months during, since the beginning of the Masa Amini revolution. Hmm. So I sent this report to you. Did you end up um, checking out any of the images that Iran Wire provided in their expose? Here's, is this one of them? That's one of them, yeah. That's our headline uh, photo. Another one. Wow. Yeah. Now this was Is report it was. Yeah, go on. Go ahead. Should I open the article so we could look at all the pictures? Yeah, please do that. Because it really was shocking to me. Because I think this is something that's really important to talk about. Because, um, like, if you're familiar with the history of the uh, Islamic Revolution or the Iran-Iraq War, you know that child soldiers were used in the tens of thousands in the Iran-Iraq War. However, I was not aware of how much it has actually continued to this day. So Armin here on the screen is showing recent photos that were taken during... Um, 2020 2022 excuse me um so in september or in october we saw photos of these people that are obviously children that are being used by the besiege to help control protests and they're basically allowed to do what they want in terms of uh handling crowds but then like i said earlier wait armin if you go back up to that x-ray um there here's a images that Iran Wire received of a child soldier, a besiege student who was severely injured while, because regime forces shot this kid. They mistakenly shot their own besiege student. And so they hired, uh, so they got the, they got the kid to suppress people who were protesting and they shot him as well. Yes. Wow. And he was they severely injured. The kid that they heard. Um, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And that is insane. What, what was really shocking to me, I really encourage everyone to go read this report in full. It's on iranwire.com and the title of it is Iranian soldier, excuse me, Iranian children used as human shields against protesters. And they do a really good job going through the history of um, the Islamic Republic's use of child soldiers going back to the Iran-Iraq war and how there's just, um, at least in one case, just full, the regime talks itself about their use of child soldiers. On the international stage, they'll say, oh no, we're not doing that. And to accuse us of doing that, um, you're you're slandering the Islamic Republic and this is all propaganda, da, 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 da. But in their own media, they talk about how proud they are that there were children who wanted to fight, you know, it for Khomeini <laughs> in the Iranian Iraq war. Um, but then what I was shocked to see these photos continuing into this day. And they have a lot of photos that came out from um, not only the protests that happened in 2022, where you can see them obviously on the street, but um, a lot of footage and photos in 2021 and 2020 of all the training sessions that they do. So if you scroll down, wait, where are you in the document? Can you scroll up a little bit? 
to where you see a little bit further. So I don't know, wait, teeny bit more that just so we can get, oh, wait, sorry, there was a leg. I'm sorry, can you go back down to where it says weapons training course for children in Mazandaran province? Right here. Look at this photo. This is so crazy to me. And maybe this is me being naive, like fair enough, but it's wild for me to see all these boys, very clearly boys, going through weapons training with a man, you know, like essentially pointing a rifle at them inside of a mosque. And so this report also exposes how the Islamic Republic uses mosques explicitly to recruit child soldiers. And so a lot of these are happening within religious institutions and they will put out calls to explicitly say when um, they are looking for child soldiers and such and um, or besiege students is probably how they would put it. Um, and cause like Armin, I knew that when you were growing up, like you were taught how to take apart a Kalashnikov in school, right? Yeah. And a G3, I think I remember correctly. G4, well, yeah. How old, how um, old were you when you were taught how to do that? Um, I don't know. Younger, my, younger than 15 for sure. Oh my God. <laughs> what? Sorry, I thought he, I, I just got shocked again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, part of school curriculum. I, I know, but I thought it. you were like 15. It's illegal, definitely, but okay. But younger, you were younger than 15 learning how to take apart a Kalashnikov? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were so excited. We were like, we were supposed <laughs> to go and play with guns, basically. The school, but, and they didn't, I, it was horrible. Like we were told that we're going on a school trip and they're going to t t show us how to shoot guns. And we were like, oh, my God, we get to shoot guns today. And then instead, they took us and they made us stand under the sun for hours, just basically doing soldier. What is it like to do the soldiers like when you give them marching orders or what is it like you have you're, you're formations. Just training on drills? Yeah, form dr yeah, for drill formations formations. Or something. Yeah. Yeah, drill formations. Under the goddamn sun for hours mm -hmm. we were just standing and we had to practice like not moving for like for like I don't know 10 or 15 minutes under the sun. And like we I was I was told I could shoot guns today. Where are the guns? And then eventually when they would give us guns, they had no bullets. They were just told oh. they were, we were just told Yeah, like we were told to take it apart and put it back together again. I like we're playing Humpty Dumpty <laughs> instead of shooting guns. Like, what is this thing? And it wouldn't go together. It was so annoying. It was a complete day ruined, basically. I did not think that's hilarious. This. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so it's not funny, but the way that you talk about your experience is so funny. <laughs> You're like, the child soldier again. training isn't what bothered me, is that I didn't get to shoot anything, okay? <laughs> and okay. the annoying thing so, is that nobody knew what Humpty Dumpty means, because I was thinking, like, I was that, that was, like, going through my head, like, put it back together again, and nobody understood what I was referring to. Oh, <laughs> because was... you were just the little rich kid that got to get westernized things, <laughs> is that what happened? I watch cartoons. I watch cartoons. Yeah, 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 yeah. But your your yeah. family was more exposed to like English and Western things, probably than most families. Yeah, but and it, there was a bank robbery. I remember as a kid, and there was the shooting involved in that bank robbery. I remember in the news, and in the court, they asked him how he knew how to use a gun, and he said, "I learned that in school." <laughs> <laughs> like it's in court, in court is like, how did you know how to use a gun? And it was like, I learned yeah, it in yeah. school. <laughs> you did. You, your government you, taught me this. <laughs> you taught me. Thank you. Yeah. You're taught. <laughs> so, Sorry. like, I knew Sorry. that this was like a something that happened inside of Iran, right? But I wasn't this. aware of how actively it was happening. I don't know. That's a recent photo, too. What does that say? That says 2020. 
And to see how systematic it is, like Dee brings up a very good point. Dee was saying, um, when I think of child soldiers, I think of rebel militias, but this is state sponsored. So gross. Mm. Exactly. So to pour through the documents and to see the evidence of how state sponsored it is, I guess that's what I found very shocking about this. And so I thought it was important for us to highlight it. Well, during the Iran-Iraq war, uh, children we, were used as uh, minesweepers, like as not as in minesweepers that you had a device to find the mine, as in you walk on the mine and you die so the adults can come behind you. So they sent children in front, um, so they die, and the mines will be clear for the actual adult soldiers to walk behind them and do the thing. So this was this is how this regime started. Yeah, I mean we we as oh yeah like we um how old was Hossein Fahmide? Hold on, let me just check. Hossein Fahmide. We grew up with oh that kid in the in the photo that they showed in this. Oh my yeah yeah yeah. So he was thirteen. We'd we, scroll down so you can see his photo, so the audience can see his photo. Wait. It, according to Iran Wire, he was 13. Oh, you have Iran Wire talks about Hossein Fahmide? Wait, scroll down. I think I know what you're talking about. This kid? Is it? Uh, what is this? No, this is not that kid. No, but we, we uh, in our school, when when we grew up, we have a chapter in our elementary school about this kid called Hossein Fahmide, which means Hossein the Wise, which was this 13 year old boy who basically um, put grenade on himself and jumped on, on like was in, was in the war between Iran and Iraq, right? And he was introduced mm -hmm. to us as a hero. He was 13 and he was a soldier in war on the Iran side, oh right? And we learn as kids how big of a hero he is. And what he did was he, he attached grenades to himself and he jumped under the tank. By the way, I don't think that actually works, um, but that's what he did. Like I never understood why, didn't, why did he have to go under the tank himself, but that's the story. Here, oh, here I found it. My, my mm. same fact he did, right? So he, he was a suicide bomber before suicide bombers, before Al Qaeda and ISIS and stuff, right? And he basically he his picture is was at least on Iranian money, right? And he we wow. learn about him as a hero uh, in school. So I don't know why they say that we don't have child soldiers. We literally celebrate this kid as a hero in our elementary school. And his thing was that he killed himself. I mean, I shouldn't say that on YouTube. Um, God damn it. I shouldn't say that on YouTube. Well, it's too but, late now. Yeah, it's too late. No, but they completely anyway, deny are, this on the international not level. It's in our school books. It's, it was in our school books. Yeah, so here, wow. Qasem is also confirming this. Qasem is saying, Khomeini has said, my leader is that 13-year-old kid who puts grenades on himself and lays under the tank. Yeah, Khomeini said that th this kid was his hero. Oh, there's that. Wow. Military. So, yeah, you, this is military. So, family. There was a 13 year old boy from Qom who, at the outbreak of the war in the 1980s, left his home. So, yeah, this is his military service. I don't know. How could they deny this? This is part of their history. That's really disturbing. Yeah. yeah. So, I thought that this was really important to cover because I wasn't aware of how systematically it still occurs to this day. Yeah. So thank you. Actually, I didn't know either that it still happens. That I mean, I knew, but I didn't know the extent of it. Yeah, because the, the, the make, image... make it clear. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, you go ahead. And then after that, we have to show a super chat. <laughs> Sakai is saying, "Make it clear that you disavow and disagree with this, and that this is in the context of a historical discussion." YouTube is picky. Yes, this is all true. Obviously, we condemn this. This is a this is a war crime. <laughs> Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sekai. Also, thank you, Sekai, for the $5 super chat saying, down with Khomeini, down with Khomeini, I think you mean. Khomeini is a legitimate regime. 
and you have the lion and the sun and the sword for the representation of the flag of Iran. And $20 to appear in, Susanna, $20 to appear in. I'm saying, please respond with the total amount donated to date. Do you know the Amazing. total amount? Amazing. Thank you. Well, as we've been doing this segment, I've been trying to log in to DonorBox to freaking see what our total is right now. And um, basically, it, it, the two-factor authentication won't let me in right now, which is so annoying. So I'm going to keep trying. And if I get the total donation amount, I will let you guys know shortly. Okay, okay. Thank you. Sorry, I'm second, doing the, because I'm, I know I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can. He keeps to us to get to get that update, and we still never give him an update. <laughs> sorry about that. All right, I can so you tell you this. off the top of my head at this point, it would be around six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. Oh wow! Around thank you guys. Six hundred dollars. Okay, okay. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.